Hey, welcome back everybody to my new show called Deep Walkers. I'm here to get today with Shmuel Siegel. And Shmuel's an interesting guy, resides in Los Angeles. Uh, he's a successful commercial real estate, hot head honcho kind of guy, and you know, served in the military as well. So far I've had this is my second show and I have a couple military guys, so this is cool. Uh, worked his way all the way up to captain in reconnaissance you know, defense, all that, all that really cool stuff that obviously takes a smart guy to be involved in. When I think about people that I want to have on this Deep Walker show, uh, Shmuel came to mind because he's just a, he's a cool guy. He's got a good energy and good vibe and uh, very articulate, and I think you guys will really enjoy it. So, Shmuel, thanks for joining us, brother. Thank you for having me, Jefferson. Thanks for the introduction. Thank you. Yeah, man. Uh, so today we're talking about making things happen. And as cliche as that may sound, I, I threw this out to Shmuel and we picked this one because it is something that we face every day. Uh, we find ourselves, you know, with small tasks, with big tasks, and the smaller the vision doesn't necessarily mean the easier path, and the bigger the vision doesn't necessarily mean the longer path. And and we want to talk about things like that and where did we get some of this stuff that as a, as a general kind of mass, uh, they call it mob, you know, the mob understanding that we all have. Uh, so I'm going to throw it out to Shmuel as well as making things happen. You know, obviously we talked before the show about inspiration and how does inspiration play into fueling that agenda that you're on to make things happen. But, you know, I want to open up the discussion with you, Shmuel, because I know you're uh, an ambitious guy and you have a lot of big goals and you made a lot of things happen already. You know, it's nothing to shake a stick at with in regards to your military career, but also, you know, to thrive in a city that is Los Angeles, which, you know, it's a beast. And um, and to make something of yourself, and I know it's a family business, you know, it's a, that your father's in as well. So talk a little bit about your your perspective of making things happen and how, um, you know, you how you branch, you're branching out into being a screenwriter, you're going to produce your first feature. I mean, you know, these are massive. And how do you approach making things happen for yourself? And then we can start breaking it down and peeling the onion apart. Okay. Well, great question great concept to talk about and very important also when you say onion I think that's perfect because we need to start with the beginning and where does it all stem from and when you tell me inspiration I think motivation what is my motivation and when you say motivation what is motivation and when you really break it down there's three sides to motivation there is natural motivation Passive motivation and active motivation, and I'll explain each one. When I say natural motivation, it's the natural needs of the body. So if I'm thirsty, I'm going to drink. I'm motivated to drink because this is a natural need. If I need to eat because I'm hungry, I'm motivated to eat, not because I need anything more than just my natural sense. And, and you get the picture. This is a natural motivation. It's something that's very bodily. It's very instinctive. When you say passive motivation, that exists in all of us. Somebody can come and say, I want to lose weight. Are you going to go on a diet? No. Why not? Because I just don't feel like it. But you said you want to lose weight. I do. Or I want to pass this test. Are you going to go study? No, I'm not. Well, how can you not go study? You want to pass the test. Because I'm just not right. going to because I don't feel like it. That's passive motivation. You have it inside, right. but There's you're not doing limit. anything with it. Exactly. Right. Right. And active right. motivation right. is when you, take, when you take it that next step, when you take that step forward and you're saying, I'm going to do something about it. This is the action. And the action is maybe the most important part of anything because you can sit down and dream and think. You can think positive all you want, but if you don't take action, nothing is ever going to happen. Right. So you're, you're correct. And we're – you know, let's earmark that so we can come back to that um, action component and why it requires some form of 
you know, scientific, as they would say, cause and rea- you know, cause and effect. Um, but let's mm-hmm. let's start with the natural motivation, as you're as you're saying, that natural inspiration on an innate level. You know, as I and I'm sure you have done your own investigating, and you know, you're a you're an inquisitive guy, and I think by nature human beings are inquisitive. You know, spirit. You know, souls are inquisitive. You know, we have that instinctual nature inside of us to be, to wonder and to examine and whether we use it or take care of it or nurture it or apply it, that's different, right? That's another step. But innately, as you said, we have a natural inspiration or motivation to do something. And that impetus, you know, I've seen it a lot in, you know, colleagues or partners, of, you know, different, different ventures or you know, projects I've worked on, and I want to, you know, ask your perspective about what I'm about to say, is that the nature of the human soul wanting to do something and make something is, a, is an organic force. You know, it's this force that comes and it looks for somewhere to plug in. And when I say that, mm-hmm. what what are your thoughts about that? What does that spark, that concept? When you say that, uh, it takes me to basic sociology of someone within mm. himself and someone within the crowd. Because a big question that I always have with people is, you're trying to accomplish something. This is something natural. But are you trying to do this because you're trying to show the world something? Are you trying to... Uh, feed an ego that's, you know, inside yourself? Or is this something that you want because of you, because this is something that you need to accomplish? And it's very different. Um, Someone who goes and does something for the crowd, for somebody else, for the world, Mm -hmm. um, that's a certain type of motivation. And I think in a certain sense it's not complete because you're always doing something for somebody else. Whereas if you're doing something for yourself, you will have the whole picture, if you know what I mean. Yes, of course. That's, that's, yeah, that's great. And, and that completeness, you know, you see it a lot in people who have achieved at a very high level in whatever it is. And I know, you know, the, the mass majority is going to measure success and achievement by, you know, the, the zeros behind the dollar sign and all that kind of stuff. But there are people who have achieved at a very high level and, you know, were not financially well off, but they've done something amazing for the world. And, and yet that lack of completeness um, makes you wonder, is there, some, is there a texture to the form of measure that we're talking about? And you gave three examples. Is there a difference between those? Because if one is creating an incomplete success, but yet it's successful. Why would the other ones have more completeness? What is it about those that that brings completeness with it? That's a great question, and I have two sides to answer it. I'll say (laughs) the first one in a parable, and this is a very favorite parable of mine, and it's something that uh, needs to be – this this is very – thought-provoking. So if you picture this with me, you have an older dad, a young son, a very old donkey, and they need to go into the city. So the father puts the son on the donkey, knowing that he is a little boy and he would have a difficult time walking. And although the father is old himself, but he prefers to put the son on the donkey and they walk into the city. And the city all look at the son and the father, and they say, look at that boy. What kind of horrible education is that? His father, his old father is walking, and him, like a king, is on the donkey. And they hear that. So they say, oh, my God, oh, my God. So they switch. So the father goes on the donkey, and the kid walks. And then everybody points, and they say, look at this dysfunctional family. 
Look at that father. What kind of education is that? He lets his son walk and him like a king sits on top of the donkey. That is absolutely a disgrace. So they both get on the donkey. And everybody looks and they say, that is just horrible. That is pure animal cruelty. That's an old donkey. And they put both of them on the donkey. That's, that's horrible. And they both get off the donkey and everyone says, look at that idiot of a family. They have a donkey, no one's using it. And that teaches you that no matter what you do in life, someone will always have something to say about it. But the only person that knows the truth, the only person that knows what you really need is yourself. And you need to trust yourself. If you do things for other people, other people will always have something to say. But when you do something for yourself, you know the truth. You know what you need to do. And that takes me to the second part. My yeah. ultimate mentor, my, my number one guy who I think taught me so much, his name is Roger Dawson. He's a big lecturer. He's absolutely incredible. And I have to use his name because he's absolutely amazing. And in one of his lectures, he says that the journey is the way. That a big problem that we have in the world is that we think that when we get to our goal, that's the point. But if we don't enjoy the way of getting there, then we missed it all. Because right. we get to the point, we get to our goals, and we don't feel complete. Why? Right. Because it's the journey that we enjoyed. And even um, as an example that he gives in the lecture, Moses. And Moses' right. goal was to reach the Holy Land. And he never right. reached it. He never got to the Holy Land. And still he is the leader of the Jewish people. He led them in the desert, right. and he is known as a great, great guy. But when you look at it, it's right. like, wait a minute. He, he, technically, he failed. He never achieved his goal. <laughs> but, he, what, but what did he do? What did he do on the way? Right. He did everything he could, and he enjoyed every minute, and he taught, and he led, and he was positive. And until his very last day, he was the leader. And he knew he wasn't going to make it. It didn't matter. He did it because that was what he wanted to do. He was a leader, and he knew it. And right. the journey is the way. And when someone is complete with himself and he knows this is the journey I want to embark on, this is what I want to do, this is my passion, and I know this is true to me, people will feel that passion and they will go with you. Interesting. And, they'll, and, that, and you know, and we're going to talk about inspiration. And, you know, and I want to touch on what, what you were talking about in regards to, you know, I, I, you know God bless everybody who's, you know, who actually does something to help things be better, whatever that is. I, that's, I don't care if it's you're walking down the street and you see a, you know, nowadays it's masks laying on the ground. You pick it up and you go throw it away. That in of itself, I, I, yes, sir. I applaud, that as, much, yes, I applaud sir. that as much as SpaceX, you know. So Absolutely. I want to touch on something that you talked about because I know, you know, this is what got me. When I was a little kid, I'd hear people say things and I'm going, is that true? I'm going to go look at that and I'm going to put it up against all this other stuff and see if it stands after all the weathering and the scrutiny and, the, you know, and see if it holds up. And I, you know, I, all these great minds who, you know, the, the life is a journey, not a destination, all that stuff. But I wanted to know, what does that mean? How do you do that? Mm -hmm. You know, you can say all that. And, you know, but what does a person do on a daily basis to make sure the journey is the goal? And what does that mean exactly? So it's, it's not so like esoteric, airy fairy, you know, it brings it into reality. You know, obviously you, you know, me somewhat, you know, we're, get, we're getting closer all the time, but the first show is all about being grounded. You know, I always go like being grounded and how do I ground the information in real life? And, and, you know, I see it in clients, man. And I've, and I just see it all the time. Not only do they not know that they're putting ingredients into their dish, you know, the dish of their life, the dish of their day, the dish, as you would say, of your journey, but they wouldn't know the difference between putting in something positive and good and, you know, with a, and spinning it in that direction or 
the difference between that and that they're putting something in that doesn't have a positive effect on what they're actually trying to make happen. Do you understand? Like, am I being clear? I understand. Oh, you're yeah. so clear. And I completely understand. And that definitely brings us into um, neuropsychology, which is also an interesting topic. Yeah. And there is a, a yeah. huge thing in neuropsychology that what you see yourself is a complete um, singular view of the world and nobody else is there. Was, there's, a, there's a very nice case study. It's very interesting. There was a, a truck driver who went into a very small town, and he went into a roundabout. And he was doing his shift. He just does it all the time. And at one day, he accidentally ran over a small boy. Now, it's, it's absolutely terrible. But when they took him to court and they tried to understand what happened, he said, I didn't see the boy. I did not see him. And... It's because he really didn't, because he does it every single day. He was not expecting that boy to be there, and he really didn't see him because he's so used to it. He's just for a year done the same thing over and over. And technically, I mean, the boy crossed with his bike where he wasn't supposed to be, um, and he wasn't charged for anything. It was it's a terrible case. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. But just the the to, to understand the concept that. When you only count on yourself, then you can lead yourself sometimes in good place and sometimes in a bad place. And actually a right. very funny example from, I love using the Bible as examples, and one very funny example is if we know the story of when the Jews left Egypt and Pharaoh was running after them and the sea split into two. And... I mean, let's look at Pharaoh from his perspective to just kind of understand as a parable what we're trying to talk about. He is saying the right. sea is splitting for the Jewish people. And what does he do? He runs into the sea. Why does he do that? That doesn't make any sense. If I would see somebody opening the ocean for my enemy, <laughs> I would not walk into that. That doesn't make any sense. But he was so sure about himself. He was so positive that this was the right thing to do, he didn't see not left, not right. He just went right at it. And that's why it's so important, I think, that you always have a mentor, that you always have somebody that you can talk about things, that when you do introspect and when you think and when you meditate and when you ask yourself all these questions, you also have someone to talk about it, someone that you can trust, someone that you can um, rely on and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is my plan. What do you think about this? Um, along with that, education is so important and imperative because it also yeah. gives you that outside view, outside in. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, the, the conscientiousness of making things happen is so imperative. Wouldn't you say being conscientious about everything? And, I, you know, I always found it interesting, you know, in my 20s, I, I have this big energy, you know, it's like, I, and I poured into things, and I mean, you may be able to hear it right now, it's like nothing, I, people have said this since I was a little kid, when I'm doing something, there is absolutely nothing else in the world that exists. I mm-hmm. mean, it is this and only this, and so much so that I was a very high-performing athlete as a kid, and the coaches would come up to me at, after the game and go, so, you know, and training next week, we're going to talk about all the things that you need to work on and stuff. And I would look at them with this blank stare, and they're going, you know, we don't understand. You know, we're going to work. You've you got to keep taking your game to the next level. And I'd look at them, and i go, no, I understand what you're asking me to do. You're not understanding that I don't remember, because I was so in it, I don't remember it happening. <laughs> yep. And I, and I used to love that about myself until it got time to take things to the next level. And I made my first movie, 23 years old, and, you know, that's super young. And I raised all the money, and I produced it and wrote it and directed it. And the kids who were in it were, you know, blowing up in other movies and other TV series. And everyone's going, this is going to be – we got picked up by big agencies and everything. And I thought that that ingredient was going to be enough. He's just this guy that's just so all in. I mean – even if he loses, he, he will walk away and go, there's nothing else I could have done. It just wasn't my day or whatever. That's the key. And I realized, That is the key. Right? Mm-hmm. And I realized that, that there was another ingredient 
and, we'll, and that way we can segue into inspiration and how we use that, is that being all in and being like that is great, but I lacked a level of conscientiousness of self and what it actually required to make what I was trying to do happen. I was trying to create the image and manifest a, 20, a group of 23, 22, 19-year-old kids who made a movie that was in all the festivals and sold out and got, you know, written in the Hollywood Report. All this stuff was going to blow up like the next Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction in, in that time, right? Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's like the best way I could describe it now in looking back in hindsight and why I'm using this example of these ingredients and, you know, okay, know what you're going to try to make happen, but what's it going to take? Because that, I look back and go, I brought ingredients for lasagna, but I needed to make minestrone. <laughs> and, I, and I wasn't quite conscientious enough and aware enough and awake enough to go, if I want to make that picture I described about the young kids making this movie and it's unbelievable and, and got Kodak behind it and the, the president of Kodak, I mean, all this stuff is like all the things were lining up and the planets and the stars and I mean, every, we got called by Miramax. I mean, all this stuff, okay? And to be able to look at it now and go, if I was just another layer conscientious of what it would have really taken, I bet I could have created that picture to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, so the conscientiousness of the, lev- the layer and ingredient of inspiration mixed with the layer and the ingredient of being so all in and in and in that truth of what you're trying to make happen so much so that it's like organic nature operating on itself and you just happen to be the conduit, right? You don't remember. Yes. Because I was I was so doing it that the watching it and being cognitive of myself wasn't necessary because I was it, right? That layer yeah. while, was while you were absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say while while you were talking, you said that you looked at yourself and you said that's the best that I can do, and I think that's a key right. element into the whole thing. That somebody when I go to sleep at night, I look at my schedule, I look at what I did, and I say, did I do the best that I can do? Because if I did the best that I can do, I could not have done better, and that's good. And if I could have done better what do you do tomorrow, I will fix that. Right, right. What do you do when you hear, no, you didn't? You fix it. You understand what happened. You meditate on it. You think about wow. it. What could I have done better? How do you do I it? Think How do you do it? I, 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 you know, that's a very good question. How I do it, I mean, to me, it's years of just getting to know myself and knowing my pitfalls and knowing how to understand myself. And this is going through the military. I used to be a huge perfectionist. I used to be the kind of guy who would love to take control of everything. I would never like to hand over anything to anyone. And being an officer, you just can't do that. And a little in life, you understand that you can't control everything and you have to give other people duties and you need to give – Um, responsibilities to other people and you need to control it in a way so when I finish up the day and I look back and I say what could I have done I understand first of all it's okay not to be perfect all the time because the next day I'll be that much better you learn from your mistakes I I, I used to um, be concerned about myself that when I used to have my downs and everybody has their downs now, there are certain people that have, like, different types of downs. So um, I know um, Winston Churchill and I are very similar in terms of um, when he was down, he was down. But when he was up, he was all the way up. So it would take me maybe a day, a few hours sometimes to kind of, like, pick myself up and shoot back up to the moon. And when I'm there, I'm up there. And then, you know, a month later, I might have, like, something happen, so I'll go down and I'll just be there for, like, a little bit, but then I shoot right back up. 
other people, it's more, you know, subtle. It's like, okay, a little down, a little up, a little down. And that's all about getting to know yourself and t- telling yourself it's okay. It's normal and it's okay because that's who I am. And I know myself and this is how I deal and kind of knowing how to deal with situations. Um, and to specifically answer the question, I'm a very detail-oriented person, so I, I take things into detail. I say, okay, what did I do? Who did I call? How was the conversation? Um, what did I say? What didn't I say? And I write all this stuff down, and then I take notes on it. I'm like, okay, if it's tomorrow and I have the same conversation, what should I add? What do I need to learn to be that much better? How do I prepare myself next time to be that much better? What kind of books can I read? Who can I talk to? And I yeah. talk to a lot of people. Uh, Jefferson, you know, you're one of the people I talk to a lot about these yeah. things yeah. and reaching yeah. out to people and saying, hey, this and this and this happened. What do you think about that? How do you think I could have done better? Taking other people's advice is great because those people in the world that just want to help you and the world is full of love and full of care and full of compassion and people really want to um, genuinely be there on your side. And I know these people and everyone listening here should get to know who these people are, who are the guys that motivate them, what are the things that motivate them, and reach out when you need to and ask and always be open to learning something new. Um, the day you stop learning is the day everyone is going to pass by you and you're going to be left behind. Um, learning is an yeah. ongoing experience for the rest of your life. And I always find new people that inspire me and I love listening to inspirational and motivational um, tapes and uh, audio books and the whole thing. And I, I hope yeah. that kind of explains what I do with myself, but I think it's a very individual thing and every one has their own way of coping, their own way of dealing with it. And the yeah. most important thing is actually doing it, sitting down and saying, what did I do today? What could I have done better? What would I have wanted to do? And don't take too many steps. Don't say, okay, I'm going to go from, I, I called, I did five call, uh, cold calls today, so tomorrow I'm going to do 100 because five wasn't enough. No, if you did five today, do another five the next day so you could do 10. Um, making right. unrealistic goals is not always good, not because it's impossible, because it can make you feel, um, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of tired distant. about it. Yeah, distant, yeah. Un- unmotivated. Yeah. <laughs> Un- exactly. Unmotivated. Uninspirational. It's like, oh, I failed again. I failed again. You, you make realistic yeah, goals so you can succeed. Yes. Success yeah. feeds off success. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, that space beforehand, you know, when you're designing what you want to make happen, let's say it's the five calls, and I – I have this theory that, you know, I've kind of kept in my pocket, and I talk a few people about about, uh, I call it organic intelligence, you know, that um, I think it's kind of a, a funny juxtaposition when they say artificial intelligence, because if it's intelligent, how could it be fake, you know? But when it's exactly. organic, you know, the organic intelligence of who we are, where it's sort of like you just, it, it's like a knowing, you know, you know, you know, Mm-hmm. things that you know that that feel a certain way and we all kind of have a similar system but I, I agree with what you said is everybody's different and I love the space before making something happen like five calls and the thought process in bef- the beforehand which you know like if you're making a meal you think about it before and you go oh, okay I'm going to get everything out on the counter you know so if we're going to make five calls happen and I want I'm going to talk about you know how many do I want to go well do I want to shoot for five? Do I want to shoot in the middle? Do, you know, and then what side of Jefferson does it need? What side of Shmuel does it need? I know this guy or this girl on the other end is a little bit more straightforward and kind of you know, conservative and reserved, so I'm going to give that person some different ingredients than the person that doesn't really want to talk about the issue on the call at all. They want to get, they want to connect and reconnect and chat about things. And then like the last minute of the call, like, so, okay, so tell me what, what's going on and what do you need from me? You know? So it's like two different <laughs> setups, right? And, yes, yes. I, I, 
And I think what, what was really interesting about what you said about how you know yourself, you know, knowing what you're about, knowing what motivates and inspires you, how do you take that motivation and inspiration and use it as, a, as like a tool, like a chemical, you know, that you're putting in this chemistry experiment, this chemistry set, and, and you're going, I, I'm inspired about this, so I'm going to take that vibe, and I'm going to use that inspiration, and I'm going to use the fact that I'm a good communicator, and I'm going to add some likability to it, you know, show them the side that's likable, because I know I had a meeting with a big executive at one of the studios, and he he was late, but I was waiting in his office, and he rolls in, Shmuel, and he's got these super dope Adidas. They're called Tubulars um, that came uh-huh. out a few years back, and they're super funky. And I look at him, and I, you know, and I can tell right away, you know, I, I've got my, my, my setup that I brought in with myself. You know, I'm going to be this way, and I know this guy, and I, it's the information I have, and I'm at the studio, so there, you know, there's a kind of a, mutual consciousness between them all and and when he walked in with those shoes I added that component and go like this this type of guy who wears those shoes is the guy that's like me that wears those shoes and we literally spent the first 15 minutes of our 45 minute conversation talking about tennis shoes <laughs> yes I love that you found that connection that's that's the best that's absolutely and of course wonderful I, and yeah. I have the other mm-hmm. ones that, that go the other <laughs> go the other way, and they're like, "Get out!" But you know, but I like I like that component that you're adding in about you. You need to know you, not what you think you are. Know what you really are. Yes. And the only I time that you know that is if you stop asking. If you keep asking those questions, and you come up with the same answer, you know you're pretty locked in. Mm-hmm. And it's important to add that every single person listening is special and capable and amazing and incredible. And I don't care who said what and who has had a difficult time. I, I feel for that. And I, you know, I, I'm completely compassionate for that. But everyone should know that they're special and that they have the capabilities of being successful, smile, be happy, pick your uh, head up and look up strong and get it done. Be motivated and just, you know, go get the world because everybody can. I have, and I've, I've met so many people in my life, I don't think I've ever met somebody who was incapable of doing something incredible. We all are. It's yeah. just about believing in yourself. And I believe in all of you whoever it is. So. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, and that's beautiful. And, and I want to, you know, before we go, I want to tap on, on that inspiration so that people can understand that, you know, kind of a, a thread through the sweater of this segment of Deep Walkers is, you know, like I said, there's a grounded thing that will, you know, that always kind of comes up. Another one that comes up that's going to continue to come up is that, that, that thread of, impetus that naturally as a human being that is a, you know, a soul, you, we all have that organic, intelligent, inspirational kind of fire that yes. is always looking to be put places. And you, if I, you know, if I can give you a takeaway from this that we're talking about and it's bringing it up again is that you take that and it is your absolute 100% obligation to do whatever it is that you are feeling that impetus to do because of what it will do for other people. Living for a yes. bigger cause, living for the greater good, whatever it is for you, going, I may not want to do it right now, but I felt an urge and I'm going to do that because I want to honor that natural urge we have to do something because of what it will do to help others or what it will do for this moment or what it will do for what I'm wanting to be a part of. Or, and I just think if we all took, you know, kind of listen to that impetus that you're explaining about, and it, we call it inspiration, 
uh, if you feel inspired about something, even if it's just, I really wanted to say hello to this person that picks up the trash around the community. She drives up, she, she, and this is true, she drives up in her SUV, she changes the, you know, in all these common areas around the neighborhood, and she picks up the trash and throws it in. And I wanted to say it the other day, and I didn't because I, I wasn't in that mindset and the flow like I should have. And so today when I was running, I saw her again, and I said it to her, and I said, thank you for keeping it clean for the rest of us. And That's I beautiful. look back at that. And you, made, and I, you made her day. And I, I hope that that chain reaction, if that's true, and that chain reaction, she went around picking up the trash even brighter and then went home and told the yeah. kids, people appreciate me. And then those kids go, what's appreciation? Now I want to look at what being appreciated means. And it's this chain reaction. But I knew the day before that I hadn't done it. I neglected that moment from occurring and what it would have done. And I'm so thankful. I thank God. I was like, thank you. And I pointed up. I'm like, thank you for giving me a shot to redo it. Yes. And I, I firmly believe that everything happened at the right time. And right. if, you, if it happened on that day, it was supposed to happen on that day. Yep. She maybe right. may not have been ready to receive that thank you the previous day, but that day she was ready. The stars aligned, and you said it. And that made that chain reaction. I firmly believe that, and that's awesome. That's amazing, and that's incredible. And good for Which you. Which segues. That's the Jefferson I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, like I said, I feel obligated. I mean, I won't, you know, we've all had our times, you know, crawling and stuff, and um, I made a promise to myself when I was very little to, to you know, to not, not miss it. And... I uh, do my best to make sure I don't, but segueing to the very, you know, to the last part of this is that, you know, I want to give you the floor to talk about what inspires you and what you're working on right now so that people can see a very ambitious guy who uses the brass tactics with a heightened self-awareness to make things happen for himself. So please talk about what inspires you. How do you, you know, what do you use inspiration for? How do you do it? And, and what are you working on right now? So, so we, we can bring it to home, you know? Um, that's, that's great. And I think just knowing myself, what inspires me is people and getting in touch with people and knowing people and helping people and doing what I can uh, with people. I just, I just love it. And whether it's with my um, real estate doings that I'm in touch with people and I help uh, owners sell property for a good amount and I know that I did a great deal because the investors are always happy and whether it's representing investors and being in touch with them and understanding their needs and finding them the perfect property that's good for them and it's all based around being with people. And uh, I also uh, dwelled still, I used to do a lot of psychology and certify as a parental consultant, and I deal with that also. And that's honestly helping families, building good family dynamic and helping kids grow up with the tools they need to be successful and helping parents out with that. And uh, finally, film. Film is a great vehicle to reach a lot of people and tell them a story, tell them something that will motivate them, that will touch them, that will do something, um, kind of, you know, touch, touch the deepness inside. And I, I think the type of projects I like to work on is with a very strong subtext uh, or subplot right. saying something, giving out a message that's powerful, that stays um, Maybe it's not obvious with the main story, but if you dissect it, you understand very easily that the type of uh, screenplay that I like to write, I always include something inside, something to learn, something to, um, a narrative to say, a story that needs to be said. Um, and that's reaching yeah. out to people. And to me, it's all about that. It's, I love to smile. I love to make people laugh. I love telling jokes. 
people who, who talk to me a lot, they know that I'm a, I have a list of jokes that I always keep in hand and I always find the right <laughs> yeah. one for the right occasion. <laughs> and <laughs> yes. I mean, honestly, life is so beautiful and so amazing and so spectacular that I don't want to miss a beat. You know, and people are just beautiful and wonderful, and I like to learn about each one and what they do and who they are. And life is beautiful because it's diverse and because it's colorful and it's because it's just a beautiful place to be. Just stop, look, and enjoy because there's so much to enjoy and there's so much to see and there's so much to just bring in and then use that to bring yourself out and conquer the world in the best of ways, of course. Yeah, well, it's beautiful, and there's a, it reminds me of a great quote. Uh, you didn't come here to be, un, to be understood. You came here to be understanding. And Yes, that's amazing. Be, you know, it just always resonates with me, you know, that if, if I can understand and, and urge myself and encourage myself to understand more and understand the, the inner workings and everything that it just makes it all that much more synergistic and bright around whatever I'm doing or whatever we're making happen. And, you know, one of the talents that I've always been complimented about is I always, I have a, this uncanny knack to surround myself with people who make me better and people who, you know, inspire me or, um, know me well enough to ask the right question of me that made, that makes me go, yes, good, good, good. Uh, let me push that and I will come back to, you know, um, you know, to yeah. be encouraged, <laughs> you know, pushed and challenged in, in a positive way. And, and if we can do that to ourselves and do that to each other with respect and um, harmony and camaraderie, I think, you know, I think we'd be on a really good track. So I bring that up because every time we chat, we always have a good conversation, and I know we're going to do some cool things together. Um, so thank you for, once again, reflecting back. Good, a good vibe, a smart guy, and, and somebody who's contributing to the greater good of things. Uh, it's good when you know there's others out there, even if you're not in contact with them every day. I can walk down the street, and I make a joke with, with someone and go, I don't care about that negative thing because I know Shmuel is out there doing, throwing thunderbolts at something. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I am. Yes, I am. (laughs) So thank you for coming on, man. And, you know, hopefully we jam packed it for all of you listening with uh, just things to think about. We'll be circling back with Shmuel um, on a continual basis, you know, come bringing him back in, picking up where we left off and venturing into different realms. But thank you, everybody, for your time and for listening. Likes, comments, check out, um, check out Shmuel Siegel, wherever you can find him. He's a good guy. He's a smart entrepreneur, and he's doing some amazing things. And uh, thanks again, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff Wilson. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.